Hello, my name is Tim from Catastrophe Games and welcome to the how to play video for Judean Hammer. The first time I played this with Rob and David, I fell in love with this game. I thought it was fantastic and couldn't wait to publish it. So here we go, we're about to get started. Let's find out how to play. How to set up Judean Hammer. Place the cubes on the map on every location that has a cube printed on it. In this case, we're going to use orange for what will be the green cubes in the actual game. Shuffle the cards, place it on the draw deck, and then deal out four cards to each side. This is what you'll do at the beginning of every turn. Sequence of play each turn is you draw four cards, you select the starting player, you each take turns playing one card, you then check for supply, and then you score regions. After you draw cards, the next phase is the select starting player phase. On the first turn of the game, the Maccabean player is always the first player, is always the starting player. After that, the player with the fewest victory points is going to be the one to choose who is going to go first. Usually an advantage in going second because you're the last person to put units out and make moves, take actions, and that allows you to set up to be in a good position for the supply phase, which we'll talk about later. Let's take a look at the cards you just drew. Here we have two Maccabean cards that are green and have the menorah symbols. So the menorah says that they are Maccabeans. We have a Greek card that's purple and has the upside down anchor, that tells us it's Greek. And we have an orange card that still has the menorah, but it's a sacrifice card. Uh, so it's a Maccabean card and we'll talk about how sacrifice cards work in a little bit. Let's take a look at this card. So this number up on the top is the ops value. The number down here is its combat value, and in between is its event. When you play a card for its event, in this case move up to five units, up to four spaces each, once you play it, you remove the card from the game and don't play it anymore. It's not discarded, it's removed, it's burned. If you play it for ops, it goes into discard and then it's reused again. Only the faction player, in this case the Maccabean player, can ever use the event card. When you use an event card, what you're also doing is removing this combat value as well. So in this case, to use this up, you are also removing your ability to fight and have an advantage in a battle. Now, both sides can play a card for the ops value. However, since only one side can play the event value, when you play for ops and it's not your turn, be careful because if I'm the Maccabean player and I play this card, once I discard it, the Greek player can turn around and use it as an event on your turn. So you have to be very careful about how you use these. You can't do that for combat. So if you use or flip a card over and find out what its combat value is or use that for an ambush, you cannot use it for an event card. So we talked about sacrifice cards. In this case, the event here is to remove two Maccabean units, which the Maccabean player normally would never want to do. But if you do that, you also remove a plus two Greek combat value, which is the highest value you can get in combat. So in effect, you hurt yourself at the beginning, but later on, the Greek player won't have this card to use in combat. So that's why that's a sacrifice card. So to help explain that, the card use again, when you play a card 
and use the card, you'll place it over here if you use it for ops. If you have to turn a card over to find out the combat value, it will go in the battle and ambush discard pile. If you use a card for its event, then it will be in the burned and removed pile. Once the deck runs out, what you're going to do is you're going to use these two piles, shuffle them back up to then create a new draw deck. You will never use burned pile. Once they're placed in there, they are done for the game. If at any point the number of cards at the beginning of a turn is 12 or less, the game ends and you find out who wins immediately. How to use operations points. This card has a two operations points, so if I want to use that for recruiting as the Maccabean player, I can split that among any of the cities in a region not controlled by the Greeks. So let's say this green region is not controlled by the Greeks, which it isn't, so I could put two into one of those cities, and I'm done. I could go and put it in a single controlled city in a region controlled by the Greeks. The Greeks control this. If I already had a unit in a city there so I control it, I could now bring ops two minus one, one, so I can bring one unit in there. I can also go and put it into a single wilderness area at ops minus one. So a wilderness area is any of these areas that do not have a city. So that's a wilderness area and that's a wilderness area. I could put someone in here or even though it's Greek controlled, I could put someone in there. Now if I'm the Seleucioid Greeks, I can put it in ops value in controlled cities or areas adjacent to controlled cities in a controlled region. So I cannot put them in here if this is the situation because I do not control this region. But I could go at ops points of two and put them in here. Or I could put them adjacent to where that open, I could put them in there because I control the region. Movement is the other thing that I can do with my ops points. Ops points is move units equals ops value plus one. So I got an ops value two, so whoever plays this can move three units. 2 plus 1. The Maccabeans always move with a range of 3 or 3 spaces. The Greeks always move at a range of 2 or 2 spaces and they can be ambushed by the Maccabean player. So in this case if I am the Maccabeans I want to move 3 I can move 1, 2, 3 and I've got one more so I'll bring 1, 2. I'll bring those in and we'll start a battle there. If I am the Greek player, I can move two, and say I want to move these from Marissa, one, two. If I move past a Maccabean area, the Maccabean player can choose to have an ambush against me, and in this case, they will. Now, for an ambush, all you're going to do is you're going to draw a card, you're going to look at the bottom, and you're going to look at the whatever faction this combat symbol is shown. In this case, it's a Greek. So the Greeks won this. The Greeks continue to move and they're able to go and have the battle that they wanted. If, on the other hand, the Maccabean symbol is shown at the bottom, then the Greeks have to stop their movement. They cannot continue and they're going to get a battle. They're going to get an ambush. So what happens when you have an ambush? Both sides roll dice. If the Maccabean player rolls a 5 or 6, in this case they did, then they lost a unit. And then a Greek player, if they get a 3 through 6, they lose a unit. So in this case, even though they lost the ambush and had to stop moving, only the Maccabean player lost a unit. So that's how ambushes work. Let's talk about battles. We just had a movement. The movement ended with two Greek units into an area with a Maccabean units. You count the number of units on each side, so two for the Greek, one for the Maccabean. Then you're going to flip the card over from the draw pile. You're going to look at the bottom, and whatever symbol is at the bottom, then is added whatever that number is there. In this case, the Greeks add plus one, so they have three now versus one for the Maccabeans. They win the battle, and then they'll have casualties. 
If there's a tie, the tie goes to the attacker. So this is an attack focus game. This is how we resolve battles. Say we've got this battle here in Alexandrium. We've got three Maccabeans versus three Greek units. The Greeks won. So now we're going to resolve the casualties. Look over here in this chart. The Greeks are going to roll a die. If they get a five or six, they're going to lose a unit. So let's see what happens to the Greeks. They do not lose anybody. Now we're going to check the losers, the Maccabeans. On a one through four, they lose a unit. On a five or six, they lose a unit, and they have to roll again. They could keep having to roll again until they either get a one through four or all their units are gone. So let's see how the Maccabeans do. They got a six, so they're going to lose a unit and they have to roll again. And this time, through the magic of dice rolling, they got a four. So they're still going to lose another unit, but they stop with the exploding dice. So at the end of the battle, we have one Maccabean and three Greek units left in Alexandrium. Now, since the Greeks did not clear out all the Maccabeans from the city, they have to move back to where they started the battle from. Think of this as a siege. They've had their first battle, took some losses. Now they can come back again later on and try to clear out Alexandrium. But for now, the Maccabeans still control the city. Let's talk about supply. When you go into the fourth phase, supply, the first thing you're going to do is check and see if you have any cities that have more than three units in them. Let's say Jerusalem here has five. Greeks are very worried of getting captured. At the beginning of the supply phase, they have to reduce down to three. Now the second part of supply is, and this is only for the Greeks, they have to be able to trace a route back to a Greek supply center. So all these big cities at the edges are Greek supply centers. So all the units in the middle then have to find a route back. So Jerusalem and this entire region here can't go through a road. Everyone has to travel via roads. They can't go through a road to Marissa. They are blocked, almost made it out here, but the roads are blocked by Maccabeans throughout here. So they can't get anything along the coast. They can't get anything from Samara because these units are blocking them. However, they can trace it either through Samaria through here or from Philadelphia through here. This is the only way the units in the middle are able to get supplies. If the Maccabean can get one more unit out there before the end of the turn, that means when it's time to check supply, all these units in the middle cannot get supply. What happens then is every area loses a unit and then supply two control ends. Cities. So in this case, all of these are wiped out and Jerusalem is reduced down to two. That was a rough turn for the Greeks. But now you can see how important it is to the Greek player to maintain their supply. It's also why it's really important as the game goes on that you want to go last because that gives you the opportunity to have the last play and to do things like place one more unit out there in the wilderness to cut off all the supply wagons coming in. The last phase of the sequence of play is score regions. Each region is a number of areas and is identified by a color. So this is the purple in the east. We've got the gray to the north, the green to the west, brown in the middle, and the yellow to the south. How you score a region is whoever controls the most cities in the region is going to get the point. So in this case, the east, there's only one. So this is going to be one for the Greeks. Up here, we have two Maccabean units, but they're in the wilderness. The only city that's occupied is for the Greeks. So the Greeks get another one. No one gets any points here in the middle because no one's left. To the south, only the Maccabean has a controlled city, so that's one point for them. They control all of these here, so that's another point for them. So we have one, two for the Greeks, one, two for the Maccabeans, and Jerusalem is its own region, so that's one more point for the Greeks. So at the end, that's three points, one, two, three for the Greeks, 
and one, two for the Maccabeans. How you figure out who wins the game. We're breaking new ground here. It's whoever has the most points. So how does the game end? Ends in two ways. When one side gets to 12 or more points, whoever has the most points wins. Or, as I mentioned before, if the draw deck ever gets down to 12 or less cards at the beginning of a turn, the game ends then as well. Whoever has the most points wins. If it's a tie, the tie goes to the Maccabeans. The Maccabean player will win.